welcome back to the Para Podcast. I'm your host, Sandra, and today we are joined by another special guest. I run the Flock Talk social media account. I ended up going to school for applied behavioral analysis. Look what I have over here. You can download a free parrot first aid guide. There's so much to know about parrots. Trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong in a sea of misinformation. I've been obsessed with your bird room since I first saw it on Instagram. I need to punch a hole in the wall, so I'm going to start demolishing this room to make a bird room, okay? Bird is biting me all the time. The advice is very outdated. Or their attention screaming all of the time, what can I do? It actually hits a point called an extinction burst and you have still that chronic state of stress. They're so good, I am I have eaten. I'm still alive, so. Resource guarding. Stranger walks over and tries to stick your hand, their hand in your plate and take something. You're gonna take pull that fry? plate towards you. Hello everybody and welcome to Flock Talk. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can teach your bird to spread their wings without ever having to touch them for the entire training process. This trick is not only a very flashy looking party trick, but it is also very helpful to be able to examine underneath their wings if you are looking for signs of plucking, as well as evaluating injuries such as noticing blood where you might not have been able to see it trapped underneath those wings, or if they're unable to raise both wings symmetrically, you could begin to notice some <laughs> injuries to their tendons or muscles that could then get evaluated by a veterinarian. So as flashy and fun as this trick seems, it can have some very helpful functions. The way I opted to train this trick means that we never have to lay a hand on our birds. The traditional way that this trick is trained is either by presenting two fingers towards each of the wings to encourage them to raise, or you could additionally use a wing target like we used when we were training Newt to be, allow me to handle his wings and open them. And you could utilize that to begin to shape the behavior. I opted to teach this in a way that involves absolutely no touching at all. So that way if you are someone who is maybe nervous to handle their bird, afraid of getting nipped, or your bird just doesn't like to be physically handled but you think this is a trick they could enjoy, they can still learn this trick. And to add on top of this, Newt is not a bird that likes to naturally spread his wings out very much, which makes this even harder to learn. So if you have a bird who doesn't naturally spread their wings like this, then this could be the tutorial for you. This tutorial is going to be a bit different than usual because we will be utilizing shaping and capturing to teach this instead of luring. Shaping functions by rewarding small approximations towards an end goal without physically guiding the bird. This means that you need to be able to adjust your training plan on the fly to reinforce any behaviors they're currently presenting that may take you closer to your desired end result. Training this way will look different for every single bird you work with as they will all be tempted to present different behaviors at first. There isn't a clear cut exact way that this will look. It's up to you and your training skills to guide them to the end goal no matter where they opt to start and the behaviors that they show along the way. The first step in this process is actually going to start without a bird at all. I want you to take a moment to think of all the times your bird naturally spreads their wings out. Maybe when they stretch, they hold them out for a second after they land, during bathing, maybe during play. Consider the emotional state that the bird is in and the context that causes them to spread their wings open. That is going to be your goal. In my case, Newt spreads his wings up a bit when he stretches. Not fully, but he does that little shoulder stretch and a little bit of the tips will start to come out. That tiny bit of wing movement will be enough to get started. With stretching, we can also take into account that this is a behavior that occurs as a result of being calm, relaxed, and comfortable. Those are all reinforceable things to keep in mind as we work through this. I opted to start this trick by simply rewarding Newt any time his wings happen to move by accident. When he slips a little bit, when he leans forward with that tiny wing spread, readjusts his wing, or even when he poops. Any micro wing movement is what I am aiming to reinforce. This can work for a lot of birds as they begin to isolate what body movement is earning them the treat. In my case, however, Newt began to get frustrated and got stuck, unable to make any progress after two full sessions, which is a clear sign to me that this strategy won't work for him. 
Continuing to force this to work is unlikely to help and is possibly going to frustrate him more, which could cause him to hate training, so it's time to come up with a new plan. I adjusted the way I approached this by instead rewarding the mental state that leads to stretching. I waited for him to be relaxed. Anytime he did a beat grind, shook off, fluffed up, or otherwise appeared to be comfortable on the perch, I offered him a small treat. Pretty quickly, Newt caught on and we can see him begin to offer more relaxed behaviors more consistently. We begin to get some preening behaviors here, which is brilliant because preening involves a lot of wing movement we can utilize to shape this behavior. Now there is a critical element to take into play here, and that is our reward timing. We don't want to reinforce him for our wing movement too early if we know there is a likely chance of a better movement coming soon. For instance, Newt frequently preens behind his wing, which is a wing movement, but isn't nearly as good as him preening the inside of his wing, where he will lift the shoulder out to do so. If I were to reinforce that shut wing preen, it could confuse him more and is reinforcing something that's actually further away from our goal, making things take longer. By waiting for the better preen, we're targeting a more accurate wing movement that's going to work to get our end result. However, we need to be careful with this because if we don't reinforce often enough, we can end up with a bird who's confused as to why they're not getting any treats. If there's a reasonable chance they'll do the better movement, then we wait. If he's starting to get a bit annoyed with the low reward frequency, then we will reward the lesser movement to keep him enjoying the experience. That's going to be a reoccurring balancing act throughout this entire process. Now that we've got him consciously thinking about wing movements a bit more, we're getting a lot of stretches, which in my case is a direct path to that double wing shoulder stretch. It's a common sequence for him to perform naturally. So I'm going to gradually change my criteria. While he may have been getting a high value walnut for the stretch before, now he's going to get a low value pellet instead. Pretty quickly, you can see him processing. He knows better food is available and wants to sort out what part of the stretch is correct. We can actually visibly see this process as he does the lean you would find while stretching. He stretches out each leg independent from the wing and then finally does the full stretch again with his wing and gets rewarded. He just mentally went through a checklist and established that the wing movement is what was being reinforced. None of the other parts were. Almost immediately we get the shoulders shooting up as he excitedly solves another piece of this puzzle. I'm going to stay at this stage for a little while, an entire session dedicated to just reinforcing him for these shoulder lifts. I want to do this because it was so hard for him to figure out. If we start moving to the next steps right away, he may get confused again and be deterred from lifting his wings. By building a strong reinforcement history here, if we do make a mistake and confuse him later, he will likely fall back onto these shoulder lifts as a bit of a safety marker for what consistently reinforced him in the past. While we're on these lifts, I'm going to start a process known as capturing. This is simply waiting for an animal to do the designated behavior already and reinforcing it as soon as it occurs. So when we're going about our day, hanging out on the couch or whatever else, I will have my treats ready. As soon as Newt does that stretch with a little bit more wing movement, I'm going to reward him right away and I'm going to make it something very highly valuable to make it even more likely that he will want to exhibit this behavior more often. You could also do this if you have a bird that holds their wings out after they land, if they do a little flap when you run with them maybe, bathing, or any other circumstance where you've noticed your bird does a bit of a wing extension doesn't have to be fully outstretched. You just want the ends moving out a little bit. That's all you need. This is gonna help us get the start of a full wing extension. By reinforcing it when it naturally occurs, he's going to be more likely to try it in our training sessions. So we have a good history established with the shoulder lifts, maybe build a little bit of duration with them, and we're capturing any sort of natural wing extension. So we're now going to begin to increase our criteria and try to shape the wing extension more. So the shoulder lifts, which were earning him a high value treat before, are now going to be earning him a low value treat. The high value treats will be reserved for any attempts he makes towards moving the ends of his wings outwards. Newt is a pretty smart bird and with a very strong understanding of how treat values work. So when I start to shift to low value, he knows that something about his behavior is correct, but there is something that could be improved to earn the better snack, and he gets to work. I will give a high value reward if the shoulder lifts just happen to be held a little bit taller and gradually progress from there. With some time, Newt will connect that the higher up his shoulders go, the bigger the reward will be. 
eventually I ended up getting some rapid flaps. And this was not the next step I expected him to take. I thought he would just open them a little bit at a time, but this is where our capacity to think on the fly needs to come into play. That flap is a full extension, just a very, very fast one. So I'm going to massively reinforce it with a significant amount of high value treats. That is an amazing leap towards the goal and he needs to be paid for that amazingly well so we can hopefully get it again. Since Newt offered flaps as our next step, I now need to find a way to get these flaps to slow down since the goal is a stationary open wing extension. After reinforcing the individual flaps heavily for a session or two to build that good history with it, like we did the shoulder lifts, I decided to begin to request multiple flaps per treat, aiming to get two flaps consecutively where he doesn't close his wings between them. Two flaps without shutting his wings is basically a wing extension, just with some weird wobbling going on in there. So I shift from treating for one flap to treating for two. And what's going to happen is because Newt wants to earn that treat so much, he's going to try to find the most efficient way to earn it. This means that he's going to speed up those two flaps all on his own. The faster he does the two flaps, the faster he gets the treat. Eventually we will see him cutting corners and beginning to flap without shutting his wings between each flap. That moment is something I am again going to jackpot with several high value snacks. That's exactly what we were aiming for. I want to see a lot more of that. Now from here is where things get persnickety for me. Because he offered fast flaps, I now have to try to encourage him to slow those flaps down. When it comes to training, every little microsecond matters. If one flap happens to be a fraction of a second slower than the previous flap, I have to pay that one better since it's a step towards slowing down. Trying to keep track of the speed of a rapidly flapping wing is incredibly hard, but if you can manage it, you should begin to see those flaps slow down as he begins to realize the slower the flap, the higher the reward. It took about three days of this for Newt to begin to really show progress. One tip I do have for this is to record these sessions. You can go a whole session staring at blurry wings and feel like you're not making any progress, but then when you watch footage back, you can slow the footage down and actually get a clearer vision of whether or not you are slowing the wings down. I had quite a few sessions where I felt like maybe I was losing my mind imagining a slower wing movement to reinforce, but having that footage reassured me that there were in fact slower wing movements and we were in fact slowing down. In addition to this, as a session goes on, you may notice the bird get a bit tired. This can be a little advantageous to us as they will then slow their wings down a bit with that bit of muscle fatigue that's going on. Or they'll do these funky little glitchy flaps that have a bit of a pause at the extension. Absolutely jackpot those moments to help your bird connect that the slower, the better. But with that, we do need to keep in mind that we don't want to be overly exhausting them. If they're tired or sore after sessions, they may begin to hate this training as it leaves them feeling uncomfortable and overtired. So please do not overdo it. Eventually, after several sessions of blurry wing flaps, we begin to see some really nice slow wing movements showing up. We are so close to the end goal here. We're gonna keep requesting slower and slower flaps until we see some pauses happening in the air. Even if the wing isn't fully extended, that's okay. A wing can be half open beyond the shoulder lift and still be worth jackpotting if they've decided to pause it in the air like that. It's important to focus on one major goal at a time. If we are requesting the extension and stationary duration at the same time, they will end up failing over and over and over again. It's very common for some parts of training to take steps back when we are working on a new element. They're trying to focus on that new priority that we're currently rewarding. So the extension we developed earlier will take a bit of a step back while they're focused on slowing those wing movements down. Both pieces will come back together once they understand the new requirement. As we can see, I'm getting some super lovely open wings, nice and slow, beginning to hold them open. In many cases, one wing is open more than the other. Sometimes both wings are a bit semi-open and that's okay. It takes a lot of muscle strength to hold the wing out like this for Newt. Other species might not struggle as much as they naturally hold their wings in that position a bit more. Newt, not so much but taking that little bit of a shortcut to save his energy and prevent muscle fatigue is totally okay while he's trying to grasp this new concept of just pausing with his wings 
out a little bit more. Once I'm reliably getting those slow held out wings, I can begin to request for more wing extension again. Very simply, I'm going to offer small bits of treats or lower value treats for the wings being held up and larger treats or very high value ones whenever he starts to spread the wings out more. He offers the left wing a lot more prominently at first and that's okay. I can't imagine the amount of thought and strength that has to go into holding his wings like this. If he wants to use one wing to sort out what I want first, that's totally okay. We can increase the second one after the fact, it's not a big deal. We're going to continue this process with very short session lengths. I can clearly see that holding his wings like this is hard. I want to keep the sessions short so he isn't feeling tired all the time every time we end a session. He should end each training session at his peak of feeling excited and enjoying the experience, wanting it to continue so he's eagerly awaiting the next round. Once the left wing is nice and consistent and he's seeming to be confident about performing it, not struggling physically, I'll again alter my criteria. Now a small or low value treat will be given uh, with the held extension for one wing, while a very high value treat will be given if he begins to lift the other wing a little bit more. Keeping in mind that when we direct his focus to the other wing, it's normal for the existing wing that was perfect to start to fall back a little bit. Again, it's a lot to keep track of at once for him. So while we're working on wing number two, we aren't too concerned about what's happening with wing number one. However, if he does happen to keep wing number one up, uh, while trying to extend the second wing more, I will jackpot that with a much greater payment than anything else to further help our progress towards that end goal. Since he already mastered the left wing, he makes the extension connections pretty quickly and offers more and more height on the right side every time and just flies to the finish line here. As long as we remember to pay him more for the reps that are extended more and less when he extends the wing less, it'll keep the goal we're trying to communicate very clear and easy for him to follow at this point. And as we can see, as his understanding of extending the second wing more grows, the extension in his right wing naturally comes back with it. Now he's not having to focus quite as hard on the second wing. It's easy for him to bring that first wing back into play just as good as it was the first time. At this point, it's just a matter of you deciding how long you want the wings to stay up for, really. Rewarding more for longer duration and less for shorter durations. Do keep in mind that this may be physically challenging for your birds, so don't ask too much of them too fast. And try to keep the training sessions pretty short. All that's left is to put this behavior onto a cue. This is pretty simply done by just presenting your cue at the same time as the bird doing the behavior for a number of reps so they can connect the word or the hand signal you're using to their action. Over time you move your cue to before the behavior and that's pretty much the gist of it. They'll catch on to it from there, you can practice in different scenarios, and then the behavior will be properly on cue and not just exclusively happening when you set up to work on this perch. Another quick note before we end off here is that throughout this entire training process you need to be giving as little guidance as possible. And what I mean by this is that if you're constantly saying wings or oh so close or just a little bit more, you're adding a lot of noise to the environment and that can be very distracting. When we are shaping a behavior, the bird is having to be extremely fixated on every little detail. They're paying attention to every movement they make and they're listening very closely to you. When we're just saying yes or good, when they've done the right thing, this is very clear, obvious instruction to them. They're going to take a little snapshot of what was happening when you said yes and when that treat came. When we're adding all this excess noise and movement to the environment, it makes it harder to stay focused and acknowledge what information is important and what isn't. This can cause a lot of confusion and very slow learning, so try your best to keep things pretty quiet and just give them the feedback that is necessary to move forwards. Have your celebrations when they get a jackpot and have done something really well, but you don't need to add in a bunch of other words and add a lot of excess noise and try and encourage them to get the wings out more. Use your reward timing to do that communication for you. Try not to clutter up the environment and add excess information that is going to complicate things for them. As I did say, this is a trick that is going to look different for every single bird that you teach. 
Just because this is the way that Newt opted to learn doesn't mean that your bird is going to learn the exact same way. The key principles to take out of this experience here are to move with your bird and find any small approximations towards the end goal that you are looking for. While the process may look similar, your bird might skip steps and your bird might need individual different steps in between. The fact that Newt decided to start flapping is very unusual and not the response that I was expecting. It doesn't mean that your bird is also going to present that, but it does mean that perhaps rapid flapping is the starting point you could use to train this behavior. So like I said, this is a bit of a weird tutorial to make because it isn't an easy step-by-step -step guide to follow. You have to move with your bird and the behaviors that they have opted to present to you in the moment. But that aside, this was a really fun challenge. Shaping is a training strategy that is super, super fun to work with and really challenges your skills as a trainer to help them learn. It can be a really fun challenge to learn how to tackle and overcome, and I like to use it as more of a journey than a destination in this situation, because the act of shaping and learning how your bird is going to express themselves and the behaviors that they are going to present is a really fun part of the experience. Watching how they solve the puzzles and how you can change the way that you communicate in order to help them resolve those puzzles. So that will do it for me today. This is a really fun challenge and behavior to teach and I really hope that you guys have as much fun teaching it as I did. And on a side note, we were recently a guest on the Parrot Podcast and I would really appreciate if you guys wanted to go send them some love, check it out. We had a lot of fun and discussed some very captivating topics which I think some of you would really enjoy. But that's going to do it for me today. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.